Hello, once again. Last week, our lesson was, Who is God? Now we look at a little different view. Who are the children of God? Before we go ahead, let's have a song first by David Lee. This is our song. Tell me the old, old story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. Tell me the story simply as to a little child, for I am weak and weary and helpless and defiled. Tell me the old, old story. Tell me the old, old story. Tell me the old, old story of Jesus and his love. Tell me the story slowly that I might take it in. That wonderful redemption, God's remedy for sin. Tell me the story often, for I forget so fast, or so soon. The early dew of morning has passed away at noon. Tell me the old, old story. Tell me the old, old story. Tell me the old, old story of Jesus and his love. Tell me the story softly, with earnest tones and gray. Remember, I'm the sinner whom Jesus came to save. Tell me the story always, if you would really be, in, in any time of trouble, a comforter to me. Tell me the old, old story. Tell me the old, old story. Tell me the old, old story of Jesus and his love. Amen. Amen. It's a wonderful song to think about for our lesson. Who are the children of God? The Lord is very happy to have much, have more of God's children in his church. Some people have a bad impression of the church. You have to remember that the church is made up of humans. And humans make mistakes. Yes. God doesn't. Jesus, no. But people do make mistakes. Some people are, are sensitive and say, I hate that church. And they don't understand. If you are already a child of God, you are in his church. Yes. Some say, I don't want to be in the church. Well, you are. not a child of God, then you need to know how to become one. To begin our lesson, let's see how John the Baptist knew Jesus was the Christ, promised by God. Then John said, I also did not know who the Christ was. Now, in his time, the people looked for the Christ. The Christ means the anointed one. Anointed 
means oil on the head. Why? To show God has chosen that person for something special. Jesus was anointed, but not by oil, by the Holy Spirit. John continues speaking and says, But God sent me to baptize people with water. And God told me, You will see the Spirit come down and rest on a man. The man is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. John said, I have seen this happen. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven. The Spirit looked like a dove and sat on him, him meaning Jesus. This is what John the Baptist said. So let's turn to the Gospel of Mark. At that time, Jesus came from the town of Nazareth. Now hold on. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Yes. Most people around that area know that. But Nazareth? What does that have to do with it? So remember the story about the wise men meeting King Herod in Jerusalem. And they, he asked them, they asked the king, where's he who's born king of the Jews? And Herod killed his own mother and several of his wives and even some of his sons. He didn't want anyone to take over rule from him. He didn't like it. And so he smiled and said, the prophet said the Christ will be born in Bethlehem. When you find him, come, tell me where he is, and I will go worship him myself. And we knew he didn't plan to worship him. He planned to kill him. But God warned the wise men, go home by a different route. And also warned Joseph and Mary to flee to Egypt and bring the baby to, save, to a safe place. And after Herod died, the angel told Joseph, it's safe now, you can go back. He didn't trust Herod's son who took, a, took his rule. So he decided to move north to Nazareth. That's why Jesus grew up there it says Nazareth of Galilee the country to, to the place where John was he was baptized in the Jordan River or John baptized in the Jordan River God baptized Jesus in the Jordan River. And while Jesus was coming out of the water, he saw the sky open, and the Holy Spirit came down to Jesus like a dove. The Holy Spirit could come invisibly, but God decided that he wanted John to see with his own eyes and it looked like a dove flying down on Jesus. A boy 
Jesus came from heaven and said, you are my son and I love you. I am very pleased with you. John the Baptist knew Jesus was the promised Christ when he saw the Holy Spirit come down on him like a dove. When this happened, God himself spoke from heaven and acknowledged Jesus as his son. understand. God himself spoke from heaven and said to Jesus, you are my son and I am pleased with you. God also acknowledges people as his children. Let's look at another Bible passage. Some people did accept him. They believed in him. He gave something to those people who believed. He gave them the right to become children of God. Many people believe in Jesus, but they haven't confessed and obeyed. They say, I believe in Jesus, that Jesus is the Christ. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And they do nothing. But God gave them, those who did, the right to become children of God. Faith is what leads people to become children of God. But faith without obedience cannot make us God's children. We just sit there and twiddle our thumbs? Uh-uh. Doesn't work. Notice the scripture says, when we believe in Jesus, God gives us the right to become his children. It's very easy to understand. The right. Have you obeyed Jesus Christ? If you haven't, you're not a child of God yet. If you believe, that's fine. God gives you the right. Think about that. In Galatians, it says, you were all baptized into Christ. So you were all clothed with Christ. This shows that you are all children of God through faith in Christ. Through faith, yes. But faith is that kind which obeys God. You can believe God, but not obey You remember when God sent the Holy Spirit on the apostles on the day of Pentecost? A crowd of Jews came into the house 
They were curious because they had heard the loud noise of the Holy Spirit coming into the house. And Peter rose to talk to them. After Peter finished his sermon, many of the people believed and felt ashamed that they had yelled for Jesus' death more than a month before. They asked Peter and the other apostles, what must we do? And Peter said to them, change your hearts and lives and be baptized. Now hold on. Change your hearts and lives. That's included in one word. Repent. You will find it in your Bible. Not in the death translation. But in others you'll see repent. 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 Ah. And then change. It means to change your hearts and lives. And be baptized, each one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says. Then God will forgive your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peter had, isn't done yet. He said, this promise is for you. Any of the people in the crowd. It is also for your children. And for the people who are far away. Meaning not non-Jews. It is for every person that the Lord our God calls to himself. No matter if they're Jew or not. So many people were baptized. 3,000. Wow. We saw all these things happen. And we can say these things are true. God has given the Spirit to all people. You know, it's the word that says that obey Him. Those who refuse to obey? No. See the word? There's proof. They're stuck. You, you have to obey Him. Paul tried to make it clear to the people that he spoke to. We take a look at what Paul told the people in Galatia. You were running a good race. You were obeying the truth. Notice it says were. Yes, faith is important. But obey is, a, is important too. You must have faith and obey. Paul also tried to make it clear that the people who believe in Jesus and obey him are now God's children. You are God's children. That is why God sent the Spirit of His Son into your hearts. The Spirit cries out, Father, dear Father. So now you are not a slave like before. I worry. Have I obeyed all? that God wants, but I worry. 
I've seen some people like that who worry. Don't worry. God knows that we have limits. We have limited understanding. What's important is your faith. Yes, I believe Jesus is the Christ and that he died for my sins. Then you obey him. You are God's children. God will give you the things that he promised you because you are his child. Wow, it's thrilling to look forward to heaven. Heaven will be given to you. Yes, if you believe and obey him. The writer of the book of Hebrews possibly called himself, but some think that Paul wrote Hebrews, but there's no name for the author. Author. So the language sounds like Paul, but maybe, we don't know. It doesn't matter. Also emphasizes obedience in our faith. Jesus was the Son of God, but Jesus suffered and learned to obey by the things that he suffered. Then Jesus was perfect. Perfect? Before I don't say it's perfect. Really it means complete. Complete. He met fully what God wanted. And Jesus is the reason that all those people who obey him, notice it says, obey him can have salvation forever. You notice that. Don't leave, let people fool you. They think faith is enough. Just pray and say thank you. No. Peter says you must change your hearts and lives and be baptized. So what happens when a person becomes God's child? First, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Second, our attitude becomes one of love to the Father God. Third, we are no longer slaves to worry about being perfect. We can't be perfect. We do try. It pleases God. And even if we are careless, we still love the Lord. And fourth, God will give us the things he promised we will get when we, Jesus comes again. God gives us these things because we have become his children. Are you one of his children? I hope so. What will a child of God do while he or she is still on earth? What? The true children of God are those people that let God's Spirit lead them. How? Through your Bible. Read. The spirit that we have is not a spirit that makes us slaves again and causes us to fear. We're not afraid. God loves us. Wow. The spirit that we have makes us children of God. And with that spirit, we say, Father, dear Father.
So who are the children of God? Those people who let God's Spirit lead them through the Bible when they read. And they see this is what I should do. Second, those people who are not slaves to fear. They're brave. Three, those people who love the Father. And the Spirit Himself joins with our spirits to say that we are God's children. If we are his children, then we will get the blessings God has for his people. Do you have his blessings? We will get these things from God. We will receive those blessings together with Christ. But we must suffer like Christ suffered. Then we will have glory like Christ's glory. Some people make fun of you because you are a child of God. They mock you and make you feel bad. Don't worry about it. What's important is God's applause not the applause of people. So if we are truly God's children, this is what we learned a while ago, the Holy Spirit stays with our spirits that we belong to God. It says that our spirits, we, with our spirits we belong to God. Two, we will get the blessings God promises to his people. Three, we must suffer like Christ suffered. We know that it doesn't sound good, but it's already all around the world. Some are suffering, but they refuse to give up Christ. I hope you don't give up Christ either. Well, this is a good question. Are you a child of God? Why not be baptized into Christ and be clothed with him? Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you that we are your children. And we pray for those who are watching this video. Some are not Christians. And we pray that they will learn the truth and realize that you love them. That your son died for them. That they can have life forever with you. We pray that they will understand that they need to repent change their hearts and lives and be baptized into your son. We pray that you will help us to be more and more like what you want us to become. To, to become light to the world. The people look at me and they're impressed and they look to you and we thank you and we only pray in Jesus' name, amen. May God bless you, and we love you.